everyone, great to see you again. I haven't been particularly very well lately and I've just not felt very inspired with the weather either so I haven't really done an awful lot of shooting. So I've dragged myself outside of the house today to try and embrace photography and kind of reignite that spark again despite the weather. And I'm very glad that I did because I found this absolutely stunning waterfall. I've never shot this location before. I didn't even know you could get to this waterfall, but my God, I'm glad that I've come here. I'll tell you why, it was a hell of a hike to get here though. Uh, so kind of down through this gully here, pretty much, I wouldn't even call it walking. It was kind of almost scrambling up these banks here to get to this waterfall. So it's no wonder that I've never seen photography of this waterfall location before because it's so damn hard to visit. Um, but yeah, looks absolutely stunning. Hope you can actually hear me. I'm not gonna go too close into the waterfall because you get a lot of background uh, noise on these vlogs and it can be quite off-putting. So what I'm gonna do on today's video is I'm gonna get my shot in the bag and then I'm gonna go back to the editing suite and do the post-processing for you rather than try and shout over a waterfall for the entirety of the vlog. This waterfall is actually quite limiting in how you shoot it because it kind of sits in this deep ravine. So it's very difficult to get up to any of these sort of locations. And this particular side of the ravine here is dominated by this cliff face. So it means shooting the waterfall from that sort of side is not particularly appealing because my composition is going to be filled by a, a lifeless, dull sort of face of rock that doesn't really add anything to the mix. So for me, the logical place is to shoot it from this side because it means I can add more of this sort of side of the riverbank in. And this particular side, I don't know if you can see up in that sort of area, there are a few trees which I can add into my composition to add a little bit more balance to the overall scene. So I think, I, I could be wrong, but my instinct tells me that where I've set my tripod up is the best spot. And by setting up nice and low, I don't know if you can see it there, nice and low means that I can get in close to this water surface behind me. So I can actually get the water kind of rushing underneath the tripod almost. Then I can pick up the water cascades as it goes over this rock face. And then at the top of the image, kind of coinciding with the rule of thirds, just on the left-hand side, I'm putting the main sort of fall of the water there. And then there's a little tree, kind of about there that's sitting, that coincides with the other the rule of thirds in the top right of the image and overall it adds a nice sort of balance to the scene I think and I think it's the optimum kind of shot here. So composition wise it isn't too tough but actually taking the shot that is another matter indeed. So I'll take you in a little bit closer. I hope you can actually still hear me. So I don't know if you can see just up about there the water is smashing against that rock there and it's sending moisture and water droplets up into the air. And it means that my camera, when it's in close to the water there, picks up moisture so, so quickly. So for me, that pretty much rules out using my polarizer um, or any filters, to be honest, because they're just an absolute nightmare when they get moisture on them and it really degradates the image quality and takes the, the whole enjoyment out of the process. So I'm not shooting with any filters whatsoever today. I spent a little bit of time getting my composition dialed in. I've then taken my camera off the tripod, I've dried down the actual lens element, I'm leaving it to sit for a bit just to dry, then I'm going to put my lens cap back on, go back in, mount it on the tripod, take the lens cap off and boom get my shot and I may only have a window of a couple of seconds but that's all I need. Anything longer and I'm going to get horrible water droplets all over my camera lens. That's it, shot is in the bag. In terms of settings, it was pretty straightforward. Because I wasn't shooting with an ND filter today, I've just ran my uh, aperture just a little bit narrower than I usually would. So I was running that at F14 just to restrict the amount of light coming into the scene. And that means I could run my shutter speed just that little bit longer than I otherwise would be able to. So my shutter speed was about a fifth of a second, which gives a nice degree of movement in that water, but still retaining that detail, which I always like to. Also, I was shooting at uh, ISO 100 for maximum dynamic range and image quality and um, oh sorry I'm losing my voice a bit 
it's been one of those weeks um, and um, I was shooting at about 24 mil and that's about it really it wasn't too much else to it oh and one other thing um, I did also put a two-stop underexposure bracket in as well just to cover off the highlights and that top right part of the image it's a bit of an insurance policy I've kind of got into the habit of doing it lately um, there's no harm in doing it and for me it's nice to know that when I bring it back to the editing suite if I do have any problems with the highlights in the image I've got that underexposure image that I can blend in so uh, that's about it to the, for uh, today's shoot so I'm going to take you back to my office if you can call it that and I'll show you exactly how I'm actually going to post process this image see you soon I'm now back in the office, but there's been a slight change of plan. Rather than actually just walk you through the editing process, which I've already done on a few images before, I thought I'd try something actually fundamentally different. I am going to discuss the things I don't like about my own photo. Um, I actually think that self-critique is incredibly important in photography, but probably just in life in general. And if there's anything that has made me progress as a photographer uh, more quickly than anything else, it's actually the ability to critique my own photography. I don't know if I've ever taken a photo that I'm 100% satisfied with. There's always slight imperfections that niggle me. Um, and this photo is absolutely no different. Oh, my cat has joined again. There's Misty attacking my tripod. Um, this photo is no different. There are things I really like about the photo, but there's a whole host of things I don't like about it either. So um, let's jump in and start discussing those. So here is the final image. And overall, I'm fairly satisfied with it. There's plenty of things I like about it, and we'll start with those. Um, I think the composition works. I think I picked the right composition for the area um, and I think the waterfall itself is really beautiful just the way that the single uh, cascade comes in at the top and then it splits into these sub waterfalls that flow down here. I think it, that is absolutely um, stunning and the fact that this waterfall as far as I'm aware has never been photographed like this before adds a lot of value to the photograph. There's nothing quite like taking original images and for me they carry so much more weight than going to um, locations that are photoed to death. Um, so those are the positives. But let's forget the positives and let's have a look at those little negatives. So the first one for me is the tree in the, uh, the top right hand corner. The idea of placing the tree there was a good one but for me the, the tree just doesn't have enough contrast in this area it doesn't punch out from the backdrop of bracken and uh, grass in this area and it just gets a little bit lost I think I just feel if the contrast was stronger in that area it would punch out a lot more strongly and I think because it doesn't punch out quite as strongly the waterfall over here dominates and it, it perhaps gets a little bit lost. Um, the tree isn't the most interesting subject either. It's not the, the, the most perfect shape in the world. Um, indeed, the actual tree itself tried to escape from my image. So if I go to this version of the shot here, you can see here that right at the top of the scene, we've actually got some branches coming in from another tree that's kind of just out of the actual composition um, and that was really annoying there was absolutely no way to avoid that um, it was just inevitable but what it did mean is I needed to um, I used the patch tool in Photoshop just to remove and amputate this whole part of the tree so if we go over to my final image and come up to here you can see the trees had a little bit of an amputation there just to, to remove that distracting part of the image with the tree kind of reaching out. 
um, and that's made it stronger but for me the tree still feels just that little bit lacklustre. I feel the general highlights in the sky in this area are not the best either but it's difficult to say what I would have done even with the two stop underexposure bracket it hasn't captured any detail in this part of the sky and to be honest there wasn't really any detail to capture there so I feel the the kind of the, this bright area of sky is maybe a little bit distracting it leads the eye off into this top right hand corner kind of away from where the eye needs to be on the waterfall but to be honest I, I really don't know what more I could do to kind of avoid that when you pull those highlights in too much the the sky just turns to like a gray sort of muddy mess and it really doesn't look very attractive at all um, and the fact that the tree reaches into that bit of sky also complicates the matter somewhat so it's something I'm not particularly happy with but I, I really don't know what I would have done any different to be honest. Um, the next thing I'm generally not happy about is the scene to me just feels quite flat and it's not particularly my fault but it just feels like it needed a kiss of light of some sort just to lift it and I really had to, to edit this quite aggressively to get any kind of image that I was satisfied with and usually that's a sign um, that something's fundamentally wrong with the image and, and for me the lighting wasn't great. Um, but having said that, this waterfall is in a, a secluded gorge or, or ravine on the side of a mountain that's south facing. Uh, well, it's actually north facing, um, actually. So what that means is that the sun doesn't really penetrate into this ravine um, at all, particularly in winter, which is pretty much the only season that this waterfall actually properly flows. So although I'm kind of yearning for better light, I really struggled to find the circumstances that you'd actually get better light in this particular area. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's just one of those things really. And then finally there are a few little niggling things which are kind of out of my control but still, they're still annoying. Um, although the waterfall is beautiful there's a few particular bits of it that I don't like. I don't like this long sort of strip here. It's, to me, I don't know, it, it just breaks the, the beauty of the waterfall somewhat and my eye just sort of gravitates to this strip right in the middle and it's not really adding anything. And likewise, this big bit of rock here in the bottom left, this was really problematic when I was finding this composition because it was pretty much impossible to exclude this from the composition because if I moved too far to the right um, it would break the balance in the scene between the other items um, like the, the cascade up here at the top um, there and the tree and just the general positioning of the waterfall in the image so it was really hard to avoid having this big ugly rock down here in the scene it doesn't cause too many issues but again I don't know what it adds and it just annoys me slightly and then I would say probably the final thing that niggles me slightly is I'm not entirely sure the shutter speed that I used is spot on it's not far off and I do like the way the water looks in the shot there's a lot of detail there there's a lot of interest but I don't know part of me maybe thinks there's slightly too much detail. I ran this at a fifth of a second, but maybe it should have been at a quarter of a second or a third of a second, just to smooth it off a little bit. But I'm splitting hairs here. I'm not 100% certain whether that would have made any difference, to be honest. And perhaps I think I'm probably actually kind of looking at details which really 
aren't makers or breakers of this image. I think fundamentally the one thing which is uh, represents the down the kind of the downfall of this image is probably the flat light conditions um and yeah that's just one of those things but you've got to work with the conditions that you're given i don't have the luxury of being able to go out to these locations every single day and get the perfect light i've just got to work with the time frames i've got um and to be honest that waterfall is it's scary to get to um, so I don't think I'll be going back anytime soon because it's a bit hairy to get up there um, but yeah I mean overall I'm pretty happy with the shot it's it, it, it's not bad there's just a few things that niggle so yeah that is me ripping my own <laughs> photography apart um, I hope you've enjoyed that overall I do like the image it's just slightly frustrating because I'm convinced that it could be done better just with the right timing perhaps or just slight changes here and there but that's just one of those things the value of critiquing your own photography is vast because it's the fastest way you learn no one will be as brutal with your photos or most people you'll get some trolls online but most people won't be as brutal with your photos as you are um, so I think it's really valuable to actually just rip your photos apart uh, because next time you go out I guarantee you'll just get that a little bit better and it's those incremental um, sort of step forwards in progress that really show themselves over the long term uh, sort of output of your photography I find um, but I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts with what you think of um, the image are there any things that you don't particularly like about it that I didn't cover? Or do you like the image? Am I being unfair on myself? Um, I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. Um, to be honest, I could do this critique on every single photo that I take. It's not just particularly this uh, photo. It's just I thought it'd be interesting just to show you the, the, the general way that I look at my photography and that's that kind of mindset of... Um, self-critique um, but yeah if you've got any thoughts pop them down in the comments i'd be really interested to hear your thoughts and as always thanks very much for joining me today if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel please smash that subscribe button below and um, don't forget to give the video a little like as well it really helps me out but that's about it so i will see you all next time where i will try to be a bit more positive about my photos and not slag them off Goodbye.